My name's Michael Gader. My career was 40 years in the Army in the Coast Stream Guards. My hobbies were marathons and cross-country running, so I kept myself physically active um, throughout those years. This is Wilson. Um, he's five and a half this year. And um, about five months of age, I took him to the beach. He went in for a little paddle. When he came out onto the concrete, the flat concrete, he went lame. I was still serving at the time and I started to experience pain in my right hip and uh, it would give way. So I went to see my doctor and uh, he referred me to a specialist. There was a lot of wear and tear on the hip and also on the left hip and he recommended metal on metal resurfacing. And uh, I had that operation and everything was fine. So I took him to the vet and he was on painkillers for a month, but he wasn't walking very well. And you could see with the angulation of the leg that he must've been in so much pain came down and saw Noel for a consult. He said, have a good long think about it, because obviously it's major surgery and you've been through, you know, he's been through a lot. And he'd had sort of seven ops prior to that. It took me three months after that consult to actually pluck the courage up to actually make the decision to bring it down for the op. And that's what we did. I started to experience a lot of pain there and swelling. Initially I had treatment with injections of uh, Corsetone, which didn't work. So I ended up on painkillers, it was getting that bad opted for uh, an exploratory operation. It was after that operation when I woke up I found a drainage bag at the side of my hip and uh, when the surgeon came to speak to me he told me that I'd had uh, a reaction to the metal on metal and he then said that I was to have a um, temporary hip made out of antibiotics which when fitted it's just put in loosely and it floats around but it, it leaches out antibiotics to try and combat the, the infection. The more ops he's had, it's got worse and worse. And the infection problems isn't just a matter of a case of a couple of tablets and off you go home. The bugs in his legs seem to take hold and he needs intensive antibiotics and stuff like that. And it's stuff that treatment he can't have at home. So he's ended up having to stay for quite a few weeks um, so that they can get it under control. Before he had the operations, I never thought that infections was ever going to be a major issue. It wasn't a concern of mine. with Wilson or with you, infection isn't a problem till it's a problem. Mm. And what most people don't uh, understand is that the, the makeup of the microbe that causes the infection is almost identical in a dog or in a yeah. human. And in fact, it can cross contaminate. So you could have a human with an infection that could infect a dog or a dog with an infection that could affect a human. But if you took that bug which you had in your hip and the bug that Wilson had in his leg and you put them under a microscope, it'd be nigh on impossible to tell what species it came from. The subspecies differ, but the DNA of the bug is incredibly similar. And therefore, as the bug mutates to get antibiotic resistance, it changes its DNA. And as it does so, it gives rise to resistance, not just in animals, but in both. Right. And that's the key to moving forward because what happens when you go to the doctor is he will give you antibiotics. And of course that's useless for you because the infection is already seeded on your metal. Right. And that's as I understand it why you had to have yours out. Mm -hmm. was, that, was that right? Yeah, yeah, five times. Five times? Yeah. Wow. Five, five hips. You've had five revisions? Yep. Each time for infection? Yep. When he operated and put the fifth hip in, I was assigned a specialist infection team because my surgeon at the local hospital, he said there was too much damage done from the infection. It had eaten into my bone and I needed specialist help. In five years, I've had six hip replacements, five on the right hand side and one on the left side and also an exploratory operation on the right hand side as well. These are the three problems with infection. One, they're highly virulent and they constantly mutate and antibiotics become not effective. Mm -hmm. Two, they can seed on the metal. And three, they can stay quiet and then flare up again. Yes. And I expect you've experienced the same yes. thing. But here's the thing, if the antibiotics fail, then we're in big trouble. Mm. So if you have the same antibiotic being prescribed for you and for Wilson, 
when you have a not particularly bad infection, for example, on your skin or in your lungs or whatever, then the bacteria, the next time round, will potentially get around that antibiotic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's called antibiotic resistance. Then when you have a life-threatening infection, or a function-threatening or a limb-threatening infection, like you had and like he had, and in his case, you can't chop off both front legs. In your case, what are you gonna do? Lose an entire leg? Mm -hmm nightmare. You're yeah, in a wheelchair yeah. for the rest of your life if you lose it from the hip down. And in my case and in Wilson's case, the antibiotics was our last resort, wasn't it? Absolutely. Your last resort before amputation or death. Mm -hmm. So unless we move forward together with a more responsible attitude in veterinary medicine and human medicine, we're going to absolutely mess things up for everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's where one medicine comes in. So one medicine would be the principle that because his infection and your infection are nigh on identical, we study them together, mm -hmm. we study the mutation of the bacteria together, we study the possible cures together, and we study the implants that go into you and to him together to try and see how we can prevent the bacteria seeding on them. And that's the revolution that's about to happen, that can save his life and yours. Yeah. I just didn't realise that uh, such things could be done for animals. It was amazing, printing off hips so they're made to measure for that particular animal. Why can't that be done with humans? With humans, it's off the shelf. You get a size one to six or whatever and it's put in there. I mean, I'm, and I'm an example of, 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 a, of a size off the shelf because that's why my leg is shorter than the other one. Um, but if I was done by Noel, <laughs> I'd, I would have got uh, made to measure hip. Now that you know that the bugs are the same, the antibiotics are the same, and the implants are the same in animals and humans, what are your thoughts about it now? I think it's a brilliant idea that uh, the, the technology and expertise is shared. Uh, it just makes common sense to me. I mean, I, I've watched your programmes and, um, and, and I'm thinking, why haven't I had a, a made-to-measure um, hip? Nearly everybody, when they see the truth, are asking themselves, well, why does everybody not know that? Mm. And nearly everybody, when they see the level of care that we are now given to any animal in this hospital, they ask themselves, well, why are we not having that? Mm. And the honest truth is money. Yes. Yeah. Because that, unless yeah. we invest in the future of moving forward together, we're gonna waste endless money so part of my mission is to explain to the drug companies and the implant companies that together we can achieve more and together we can save money mm -hmm. so that that money can go where it's really needed, which mm -hmm. is the patient. Mm -hmm. to, to, to me, it's a no-brainer. Well, if somebody doesn't say enough is enough, then we'll keep making the mistakes yes. in the past. Yes. And if somebody doesn't say, we can change this where everybody wins, the drug companies can win. The implant companies can win, the dog can win, and you can win, but only by working together. Yeah. And if I can do that, I think we'll make real progress.